Qingming Chang'e II is the masterpiece of Zhang Zhedun, a Song Dynasty artist, which vividly captures the thriving life of people from the Song Dynasty in the capital city of Bianjing, today's Kaifeng. The entire piece, painted in hand scroll format, deployed the method of scattered perspective mapping. bringing in varied landscapes and numerous human characters, all dressed differently and performing various activities. Performing a drama with a flowing, rich rhythm. Bianjing City, depicted in the scroll, was the hub of the land and waterways and the passageway of all transportations at the time. After being designated as the capital, Bianjing City saw further economic and culture development. With a population of more than one million, it was truly a metropolis in all aspects. The scroll unfolds from right to left moving from the countryside progressively into the inner city. From his unique angle, the painter illustrates people from all walks of life and their economic activities, giving the audience a much richer perspective than if he only depicted inner city life. What differentiated the Bianjing city in Song Dynasty from her predecessors was that all the street walls were removed, transforming the former feudal closed city with fortress-like walls into an open commercial hub. Historical records tell us that there were altogether more than 6,400 households involved in businesses of all kinds that covered over 100 sectors. Restaurants or eateries in particular were the most thriving type of business. As depicted, the hustling and bustling in front of Sun Yang shop demonstrates that this restaurant is one with the highest standard. The other smaller ones were called foot shops. In addition, Numerous tea houses and cafes are scattered across all the streets. The scroll also depicts other forms of commercial activities. An inn, like the home of the official Wang, was a regular place to stay for scholars, abound in the capital city for the imperial examinations. Nearby, a labour market is naturally formed with a group of sedan carriers waiting to be hired. The Bianhe River is indispensable to the economic and commercial development of Bianjing City and therefore brought the city prosperity, which led to it being called the Golden Waterway. Accordingly, the painter Zhang Zhedun spent one third of all his efforts to capture this thriving shipping business in the early 12th century.
There are two short and round shaped ships with a loading capacity of over 500 tons that were docked along the river. The shipping industry thrived in the Song Dynasty and grew to a great scale as early as the year 997, producing as many as 3,000 ships. This type of ship is more convenient to operate with adjustable shaft under the mast. In the painting, there is a big ship which faces great difficulty in passing through the bridge since it cannot be towed by the boat trackers in the middle of the river. Only by lowering the mast is the ship then able to be towed past the bridge with help from over and beside the bridge. However, due to the fast current and the ship's position, the mast fails to recline completely and this chaos attracts the crowd's attention. This scene or incident illustrated right in the middle of the entire painting, truly shows the painter's magnificent skills. The bridge, given its beautiful shape and design, is fittingly named the Rainbow Bridge. The highly advanced architecture design at that time is fully illustrated by its entire wooden structure, which has a thin shape and wide span. The Song Dynasty's shipbuilding technology contributed vastly to the development of import and export trade. Merchant ships travelled across East Asia, Southeast Asia, Arab and even the Mediterranean area. Silk, porcelain and tea constitute the main export goods, while herbs, ivory and jewellery are the major imports. This herbal shop gives a glimpse of the prosperous trade during that period. Land transportation, much like the waterways in Bianjing city, is developing as well. The painting actually shows camel caravans moving slowly, fully loaded with western goods, which are said to have come all the way from the Silk Road. As the Song Dynasty cities progress with prosperity, the social standing of the citizens is raised with aspiration for a richer cultural life. Correspondingly, various street entertainment venues are formed to accommodate the citizens' favorite activities, such as storytelling, opera singing, and many other types of performances for them to relax and enjoy. Alongside these economic and cultural advancements, the Song Dynasty also witnessed great progress in the area of public health. Zhao Tai Cheng's residence, as shown in the painting, is one such illustration. Tai Cheng is the abbreviation for Imperial Doctor. The Imperial Doctor could, as his secondary occupation, also treat ordinary people thus benefiting the citizens to have both easy access as well as professional medical treatment. In the painting, there is a specially shaped well outside the Imperial Doctor's residence with low walls built of rammed earth, which serves to prevent dust from entering the well. There are many such wells in Bianjing city that have standard shape and are under proper and unified management.
Before the Song Dynasty, night markets were banned. However, Zhao Guangyin, the first emperor of the Song Dynasty, ordered that there be no curfew before the Three Drum Hour, thus making Bianjing a sleepless city. This animated version of the ancient painting not only reproduces the daily daylight life of the city, but also recreates the same scenes using the nighttime lighting to bring out the charming and flourishing city in the night. There are countless such details to explore in this painting. The value of the work you have seen so far lies not only in depicting the urban life of an ancient Song Dynasty city, but also in demonstrating superb artistic skills and historical documentary value. The animated and moving painting deploys today's 3D digital technology and multi-screen technology, following various steps of modeling, coloring and animation. Ultimately, to present a vivid city life of the Northern Song Dynasty. Thanks to today's advanced technology, we have a chance to witness the lifestyle of the ancient Chinese people, as well as draw inspiration from it for ourselves through this meaningful dialogue, which allows us to traverse the gaps of history.